What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. My name is Pigeons, and today I am going to try to dive into the controversy that is the Cowboy Cup. If you guys are new here, I try to do these deep dives uh, fairly often. I uh, recently did the Story of the High Times, and I also did the Rise and Fall of the Largest Weed Company. I do feel that these stories are relevant to our community and to our culture, and I want to help by trying to spread the awareness to as many people as possible. So if you enjoy these stories, do me a favor, hit that like button, join for the journey and help us get to that 100,000 subscribers. But first, the Cowboy Cup controversy. What is the Cowboy Cup? It was an event held in Oklahoma. It's essentially a an event where you can have participants submit product from either outdoor grows or indoor grows, and it is judged for the prize of the Cowboy Cup buckle. Cowboy Cup claims to be the most fair and comprehensive community-involved cup there is, and their slogan is, you can't buy this buckle. Well, it turns out that you might be able to buy it after all. Who's involved? You've got the Gangier. It is a cannabis professional connoisseur. Well, Lex, you know what? Let me read from their website. Similar to the sommelier's role in the wine industry, the Gangier is trained in the art, science, and appreciation of the cannabis craft, consumption, connoisseurship, possessing a multidisciplinary knowledge and astute professionalism serving to raise the standard of excellence through the cannabis industry. I know that's a mouthful, and it kind of sounds like a Scientology pitch, but those were the ones that were judging the products during the Cowboy Cup. You also have the growers themselves, the ones that submitted the product. Now, the growers had to submit their product in September. They had to submit it to Oklahoma's labs to be tested for toxins and molds and so on and so forth because it was going to be consumed. It turns out all those products, all those samples passed their sample or their testing. Then they're sent off to the Cowboy Cup. They're sent off, they're stored, where they're stored at, we'll get to in a minute, and then they're released to the Gangier judges who would then perform their, their, their analysis and then give their rankings based on how they favored those products. Well, during the competition, after many awards have already been given, the, the Gangier stop the award ceremony to announce that there's going to be a mass disqualification to a number of the outdoor and light assist category products due to mold contaminants. They announced this in front of the friends and families of all the participants, everybody who's gathered there to receive awards or be there in support of. It kind of begs the question as to why would you save this news for the competition? At what point did we find out that these products were contaminated? Better yet, how did these products get contaminated? Well, on the official Gangier website, they had an official statement that said this. To conduct the evaluation, the Gangiers received de-identified samples and once received, stored the original sealed containers in, env in an environmentally controlled room to preserve both the chain of custody and the condition of the flowers prior to the evaluation. This means that every sample that was marked contaminated was reviewed by all 12 judges to ensure absolute certainty of the failing grade. Unfortunately, the results were not great. Of the 12 samples in the sun-grown category, 10 were found to consistently show both visual and aromatic indications of contamination. Of the eight samples in the light assist category, seven were found to consistently show both visual and aromatic indications of contamination. Of the 20 samples of the indoor category, two were found to consistently show both visual and aromatic indications of contamination. This means that con contamination was clearly visible in 19 of the 40 samples submitted to us for assessment. However, it's stated that when the Gangier came out and they made their announcement about the contaminations, they didn't say anything about the stored conditions, how long they had had the samples, at what point was the mold identified. They simply just said, it's unfortunate that this has happened. If you guys have any questions or any, any uh, concerns in regards to the results, come back to us and we can consult you in regards to what we found and, and, and kind of steer you in the right direction. 
What I think is particularly interesting in this case is that there are so many contaminated samples that it leads me to believe that there was something happening in between the time that the samples passed their review and by the time that the judges took hold of their samples. Something happened here and it leads me to believe that they were stored incorrectly. If you had one or two or three or four, five, six samples of 40, then I would understand that, okay, maybe maybe there was some, some product that was submitted that wasn't up to par. But to have almost half of the categories disqualify because of mold leads me to believe that there's something else at play. But what could that other variable be? Well, I think I figured it out. It turns out that the Gangier program has recently teamed up with Cure Leaf. Cure Leaf is a multi-state organization that has actively lobbied against multiple states, multiple uh, levels of government to prohibit homegrown cannabis. They don't want to see people growing at home. They want to see them purchasing from their stores. They want to see them utilizing their new one-of-a-kind educational program uh, it, rather than growing their own. So it, it, it is very suspect that you have an organization such as the Gangier that's judging a homegrown cannabis competition but also has the ulterior motive to stop people from growing their own cannabis. What better way than to, to cast shade on an entire category of homegrown cannabis? You've got the outdoor category and you've got the light assist category. What better way to cast doubt on an entire industry than to say, you know what? It's all mold. It all came from mold, guys. You can't trust these farmers. It's, it, it, it's, 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 an, it's an imperfect practice. You need to make sure you're getting stuff from a certified, cannabis producer, connoisseur, if you will. That to me is very suspect, very suspect. Even in the official statement by Gangier, when they talk about that this, the product was stored in an environmentally protected area, well, where was this area? How long was it stored? Was any of this stuff burped? Was it, you know, they, they submitted it in September. The cup wasn't until late November. So you're telling me that between September and December, November, that th there was no quality control or there wasn't some margin of error here that could have landed on those that were storing the product? That Gangier representative that went on stage even said this. This year, uh, even though we did take it all to a lab to, for second testing, all of it did go in front of Gangier, which is almost as good as being in a lab. So Sounds like somebody's trying to sell me something. So Brandon Rust, who's kind of been facilitating this entire conversation around the Cowboy Cup, had some growers and even had one of the members of the Ganji board on his Instagram to kind of hash this out. And one of the growers had this to say in regards to the storing conditions. So you were one of the entries as well, right? You guys had a, a farm, you guys put in some product. Did. Yes, sir. And so, yeah, one of the things Daniel told me is that he had the product stored at his house and that whenever the samples failed, he had to go back to his house to get other samples to go back so they could put them under the scope. So I just wonder what the conditions were and what the chain of custody was. Almost as good as being in a lab. Almost as good as being in a lab. Doesn't really sound like a lab. A lot of fishiness going on here, and it comes at the cost of the reputation of these farmers. These are farmers that are supplying for their families, their communities, for patients, and now there's doubt casted as to whether or not they can do their job effectively. And it's been casted by a company that has the motive to stop home growing product. This is an atrocity. I do believe that there will be some, some legal repercussions for the actions of those involved. It is very, very suspect that they used the Cowboy Cup as a way to amplify and to sell their product. Why weren't the farmers consulted before the competition? Why weren't they consulted as soon as the, 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 the mold was found? You can't tell me that the judges found the mold the day of the competition. They, they would have had to figure this out weeks in advance. Come on, I wanna, I, we need answers and we need them now.
There's people's lives that could be hanging in the balance, businesses that are hanging in the balance here, and we need answers. This is an atrocity by big business trying to infiltrate the culture and community that is our cannabis, and this cannot happen. This is why we need to make these kind of stories public, and we can't sweep them under the rug. Guys, if you have any questions, any comments, did I miss something in, re in regards to this story? I want to hear from you in the comments down below or reach out to me. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Social Club. I'm live every single night on Twitch, twitch.tv slash pigeons420. Come join the conversation. We actually hash a lot of these stories out live, so I'd be interested to see what you have to say. Thank you so much for listening. Peace.